is advancing up. What a cross into the American. And he's down. Oh wait. He's getting up. Trying to work his way through. And oh. What an uppercut. And the Soviet is down. And the American has done it. Sounds like a Rocky IV movie commentary. Actually, this is me describing the spectacular space race in the 1960s which eventually led to the giant leap for mankind. From Eratosthenes and Galileo to Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, mankind has always had dreams and notions about space exploration. In times when not even a single paper plane was successfully launched from a person's hand, Ptolemy, Aristotle, Copernicus, Galileo and many more came up with their own theories about our planet and our solar system. But these theories were not warmly welcomed at first. But how did we humans get from there to a point where we are actually thinking about colonizing Mars and interstellar travel? It all started with V2, the first successful long-range ballistic missile made by the German during the Second World War. After the war died and the Cold War was born, USA and the Soviet Union launched their own missile programs trying to build advanced rocket systems to reach outside the atmosphere. On October 4, 1957, the Soviets launched the first artificial satellite Sputnik 1. Four years later, Russian Lieutenant Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit Earth in Vostok 1. USA replied with Explorer 1 which then fueled the space race between these two superpowers. When President John F. Kennedy announced that America will be trying to touch the moon, for him it was more of a political move to re-establish the USA as a scientific leader of the world by surpassing the Soviet Union who had been busy in space collecting trophies including first man in space first dog in space, first human-made object to hit the moon, first spacewalk and the first woman in space. But in 1969, the moment Neil Armstrong's foot touched the surface of the moon, science shifted up a gear in our world. As time passed, we saw the Soviet Union, Japan, the European Space Agency, China, India, Luxembourg and Israel join in with the successful lunar missions. By the early 1970s, orbiting systems and navigation satellites were sent out to expand our space territory. The Mariner became the first artificial satellite of Mars and the Voyager spacecraft had sent back detailed images of Jupiter and Saturn, their rings and their moons. Conducting a successful space mission became like receiving an Oscar for how good a country's technological mind is. 72 nations today have a space program and 14 countries are capable of launching an object into space. After space stations and shuttles came to life, various space organizations joined hands to build the International Space Station which has been continuously occupied since the November of 2000, contributing to many discoveries and missions for mankind to push forward. Modern space exploration is reaching areas once only dreamed of. Unpiloted probes, discovery of oceans in Europa and Enceladus, Hubble Space Telescope and many more missions have helped us discover more about our solar system and also about exoplanets. With Artemis missions, SpaceX's immense success including first privately funded spacecraft to dock in a space station, the reusable launch vehicle Starship, the Mars program and Blue Origins mission to bring space travel for all. We are seeing the next space race for humans to reach for more and more heights in space exploration in the coming decades. So, in a hundred years, will someone be running to catch a spaceship to another planet to get to work? Let's just sit back and let time tell us the answer for that.